Hey everybody, Paul Boyer here. Welcome to Mad Men Machines Season 2, Episode 5 for Friday, June 13th, 2014. I've been on vacation the past week to beautiful California. Hey, I wonder how my trip was. I don't know. I'm recording this in advance. I hope you like the show. It's Freaky Friday! Broadcasting from the Bitcoin bunker, six blocks below, brandishing the blockchain to fight good versus evil. This is Bitcoin versus the man. This is the battle of the century. This is the Mad Money Machine. The Mad Men Machine is proud to be sponsored by listeners like you. Go to madmenmachine.com and find the donate button on the right hand side. And by Broker.com. Spend bitcoins nearly everywhere on the internet and buy bitcoins with your credit card and PayPal at Broker.com. Yes, yes, yes. We've been on vacation the past week in beautiful California. Flew into Los Angeles, uh, went up to the Sequoia National Park, and then Yosemite National Park, and then headed westwards towards beautiful Silicon Valley. Hopefully I got a tour of the Googleplex. Uh, Went to Stanford, and then drove down along the coast, and uh, all the way back down to Los Angeles. I think the trip was over a thousand mile loop in total hope we had a good time i think we're back by now i'm going to talk about on this show a couple things first of all i want to talk about the seven habits of highly effective bitcoiners and then i'd also like to pull out some old clips that you may not have heard before from the madman machine including some old parody songs that i did in the original Mad Money Machine. Oh boy, what a treat you're in for today. But the good news is, yes, there'll be another Bitcoin-centric Mad Money Machine next Friday, June 20th at 3 p.m. Don't tune out just yet, though. I want you to hear these seven habits of highly effective Bitcoiners. 25 years ago, Stephen R. Covey wrote a book trying to distill 200 years of success wisdom into just seven habits. It became a international bestseller, which has sold over 25 million copies. It's the seven habits of highly effective people, powerful lessons in personal change. Today, we'll talk about the seven habits of highly effective Bitcoiners. What's a Bitcoiner? It's more than someone who just uses Bitcoin to buy things. Bitcoin's a way of life. Bitcoiners believe in personal freedom, They believe you can conduct transactions without involving a third party. They believe that your rights should be protected. Your rights of privacy, freedom of assembly, and to keep your own property. Someone who values these rights and values their freedom and believes in conducting transactions in privacy can be an effective Bitcoiner. And as much as we like our independence, we do live in a world of other people. And we'd like the other people to value the same principles that we do. We can't force them to, but some of them don't even realize the value of the freedoms that they should claim. Adam B. Levine of Let's Talk Bitcoin Network has always said that his mother told him either be a shining example or a horrible warning. With these seven habits, it's much easier to be a shining example. The first habit, the first three habits, in fact, are all about independence, about being a better person. The first habit is be proactive. Take initiative in life by realizing that your decisions and how they align with life's principles are the primary determining factor for effectiveness in your life. Take responsibility for your choices and the consequences that follow. Now in Stephen Covey's book, he quotes a a well-known a serenity prayer from St. Francis that says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. He describes a circle of influence that we 
center ourselves within, the people that we touch. And then outside that circle is the circle of concern, things that we're worried about, but that we can't do anything about it. Being proactive within your circle of influence is the way to get things done. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Self discover and clarify your deeply important values and goals. Envision the ideal characteristics for each of your roles and relationships in life. He talks about putting together a mission statement. When you clearly see what it is you want, it's a whole lot easier to try to get there. What is it we want as Bitcoiners? Well, we want a lot of other people to use Bitcoin. We want the technological tools to become developed that help preserve our rights, our freedom, our liberty. The last episode of the Mad Men Machine, I talked about how the future is dark. Picture a world of this darkness. <laughs> and, by, and I don't mean a bad darkness. I mean a good darkness. A world where things that we want to be private are private. A world where our property is something that we can keep to ourselves. Not have it stolen from us. Not have it subtly taken from us. A world where those in power don't have such an advantage over us anymore. You're working in a Bitcoin-related project? Write down what it is you really want to achieve with this project. Or you're just an apostle for Bitcoin. Envision how many people you'd like to reach out to and help them use Bitcoin as well. And by Bitcoin, I mean all of the other associated dark technologies. Habit three, then, is put first things first. A manager must manage his own person personally. And managers should implement activities that aim to reach the second habit, that is, the end in mind. Stephen Covey says that rule two is the mental creation. But rule three is the physical creation. You've got the end in mind. Habit three says, what is the first thing I should do to get started to reach that end? Making the plan, laying out a timeline, ordering a sequence of events that have to happen to reach that end. If my end is to reach 10 people, what's the first step I need to do to reach 10 people? Maybe my plan is to give 10 people 10 millibits. How do I do that? What's the best way to get them excited and involved? The next three habits are interdependence then. This is really when we start working with others. Habit four, think win-win. Genuine feelings for mutually beneficial solutions or agreements in your relationships. Value and respect people by understanding a win for all is ultimately a better long-term resolution than if only one person in the situation had got his way. When you buy something, the idea is that both people win. You get the thing, and they get the money. That's a win-win. Bitcoin has to be easy to use, so that others don't see it as a losing proposition. Set up your friend's business to be able to accept Bitcoin. Show them how they win by not having to pay the credit card fees. You're setting up a Bitcoin project. How is it that your customer can really win by using your project? Habit 5. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Use empathic listening to be genuinely influenced by a person, which compels them to reciprocate the listening and take an open mind to being influenced by you. It creates an atmosphere of caring and positive problem solving. Ask questions. Seek to find out what's really troubling another person. Do they understand the risks of being online? Does it matter to them that they're taking risks with their privacy when they conduct an online transaction? Do they care that there's a third party involved in the transaction? Do they like to be able to receive payment easily for something they're doing online? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Not everybody's going to be interested in Bitcoin and freedom and liberty and anonymity and privacy and security. But there are people out there who are looking for these things and just haven't found the answer yet. Find the thing that they're interested in and help them get to the solution. Habit six, synergize. Combine the strengths of people through a positive teamwork so as to achieve goals no one person 
could have done alone. The one project that pops in my head immediately is Ethereum. <laughs> Look at all the different skills that are brought together. Cryptologists, uh, software developers, mathematicians, public relations people, economists, people with a variety of skills brought together in a team to bring about some great positive change for the world. You have skills, but you can't do it all alone. Think win-win. Seek first to understand, then synergize. To reach the goal goals to be an effective Bitcoiner. And then the final habit of continuous improvement is habit seven. Sharpen the saw. Balance and renew your resources, energy, and health to create a sustainable, long-term, effective lifestyle. Stephen Covey emphasizes exercise for physical renewal, prayer and good reading for mental renewal, and service to society for spiritual renewal. Yes, help people for free. And don't set it your computer for 18 hours a day. <laughs> Get up and walk around a little bit. I think there's a technological revolution coming. And Bitcoin is just the start. If everybody listening to this can adopt these habits to become more highly effective, the revolution can come about sooner. You may not get rich applying these seven habits, but you can be an effective Bitcoiner. You can be someone who's remembered for helping them. You may not get rich, but you can help other people find their freedom. And they'll thank you for it. Stephen Covey liked to quote one of Shakespeare's great sonnets. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy contented least, yet in these thoughts myself almost despising. Haply I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. You're listening to Paul Boyer's Mad Money Machine. That's the seven habits for highly effective Bitcoiners. How about the 12 steps for active investors? I know there's people that are trying to buy low and sell high on Bitcoin. They think, oh, the price has gone up. I'll sell it now and I'll wait till it drops back down and then buy some more low and then ride it back up and sell and, and then wait till it drops down and buy again. They're trying to time the market. Well, listen to this. This is step four in the 12 step program for active investors. And I haven't mentioned that this is um, material from index funds advisors at IFA.com. I should have mentioned that it's from uh, Mark Hebner's book, the 12 step program for active investors. So here it is. Step four. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A twelve step program for active investors. Step four Time Pickers. My name is Paul, and I'm an active investor. I've tried all the market timing systems, and I just can't figure it out. It's madness. Can't anyone tell me when to get in and out of stocks? Sure they can, I keep telling myself. I see your crooked glance. I've got to get back in the black soon. My portfolio is bleeding. I'm going to scream. When I look at this, I just can't figure it out. I've tried all of these methods to see your madness. I don't think that I can't see. The crooked glance you're giving me And all I tell myself are the same damn lies And you said, it's all scream It'll take some time But I'll get my high way From all the times I wondered why I don't need Another chance To think you tried to scream It'll take some time again 
time pickers, also known as market timers, believe they can predict the future direction of the market. But time pickers are fooled by randomness in the market. Academic studies prove that time picking doesn't work. Gains and losses are impossible to identify in advance. To add insult to injury, time pickers pay more taxes. If you or your investment advisor ever say the phrase, now might be a good time to invest in, we're here to rescue you. We're here to bring you home. Is there some way you can rescue me? been picking these stocks so long, investing it all so wrong. I know every crook on these dirty sidewalks of Wall Street, where hustling's the name of the game, and traders get washed away like the snow in the rain. There's been a load of compromising On the road to my retiring But I'm gonna be where there's light Expenses and fees I like buy and hold now, boy Setting out on a course With that index portfolio I like buy and hold And the turnover ratio so low Well, I really don't have to explain Picking stocks is a really big pain And you're down if you're riding with Kramer That's taken the wrong way And I dream of the things I'll do When I go and retire with a lot more money than you There's been a load of compromising On the road to my retirement But I'm gonna be where there's light expenses and fees I like buying Setting out on a course with that index portfolio I like buy and hold now, boy Owning all of the stocks in the companies I don't even know And the turnover ratio so low Setting out on a course with an index portfolio. They tell me not to give up my day job. Well, this is my day job. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'd like to thank some supporters. Starting with Brawker.com. B-R-A-W-K-E-R.com. You really got to try this service out. Doesn't cost anything to set up an account. Load it up with some bitcoins. Then go fishing around the internet for something you want to buy. You can actually create an Amazon wish list. Put the link to that wish list in the Spend Bitcoins tab. Indicate in there the total price, including you know taxes and shipping and whatever for your, your whole wish list. Indicate the delivery address for your wish list items. Select the discount that you'd like on your purchased items from 8 to 20%. All it takes is someone who wants to buy the items for you, and get your bitcoins to pay the premium. They can if they want. I did it last week with LostGolfBalls.com. I did. I selected 10%. I wasn't too greedy. My order was picked up within minutes. Who says Amazon doesn't take bitcoin? All it takes is Broker.com. Think win-win here and synergize. With Broker.com, they get the bitcoins 
and you get all the items on your wish list. Buy Bitcoins with a credit card or PayPal or spend Bitcoins on nearly everything online. Brocker.com Now, since I've been away this past week in beautiful California, I haven't been able to put any of the supporter requests in this show. You will see them in the next episode of The Mad Money Machine, which you will be able to download on Friday, June 20th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. in the UK. Go to madmoneymachine.com, click the donate button there. It'll take you out to a bitpay.com webpage. Or you can indicate the number of increments of tenths of a Bitcoin to donate to Mad Money Machine for your generous support. Then you can add four lines of text that I will read on the show. Advertise your product, announce your birthday, or just say thank you. And I say thank you for your support. You see him sitting over there on his tatami mat. Let's go hear what he has to say. It's Satoshi's Corner. Esquina de Satoshi. Yeah, we can include the Spanish speakers as well. Esquina de Satoshi. Well, Satoshi first announced Bitcoin on the cryptology cryptography mm, ma mailing list but then he switched over to the bitcoin talk forums and on february 11th 2009 he made his first posting there bitcoin open source implementa implementation of p2p currency he said i've developed a new open source p2p ecash system called bitcoin it's completely decentralized with no central server or trusted parties because everything is based on crypto proof instead of trust. Give it a try or take a look at the screenshots and design paper. And he gives the link. He says the root problem with conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. Banks must be trusted to hold our money and transfer it electronically, but they lend it out in waves of credit bubbles with barely a fraction in reserve. We have to trust them with our privacy, trust them not to let identity thieves drain our accounts. Their massive overhead costs make micropayments impossible. A generation ago, multi-user time-sharing computer systems had a similar problem. Before encryption, Users had to rely on password protection to secure their files, placing trust in the system administrator to keep their information private. Privacy could always be overridden by the admin based on his judgment call weighing the principle of privacy against other concerns or at the behest of his superiors. Then, strong encryption became available to the masses and trust was no longer required. Data could be secured in a way that was physically impossible for others to access no matter for what reason, no matter how good the excuse, no matter what. It's time we had the same thing for money. With e-currency based on cryptographic proof, without the need to trust a third-party middleman, money can be secure and transactions effortless. One of the fundamental building blocks for such a system is digital signatures. A digital coin contains the public key of its owner. To transfer it, the owner signs the coin together with the public key of the next owner. Anyone can check the signatures to verify the chain of ownership. It works well to secure ownership, but leaves one big problem unsolved, double spending. Any owner could try to re-spend an already spent coin by signing it again to another owner. The usual solution is for a trusted company with a central database to check for double spending. But that just gets back to the trust model. In its central position, the company can override the users, and the fees needed to support the company make micropayments impractical. Bitcoin's solution is to use a peer-to-peer -peer network to check for double spending. In a nutshell, the network works like a distributed timestamp server, stamping the first transaction to spend a coin. It takes advantage of the nature of information being easy to spread but hard to stifle. For information on how it works, see the design paper. And he gives the link. The result 
is a distributed system with no single point of failure. Users hold the crypto keys to their own money and transact directly with each other with the help of the P2P network to check for double spending. Satoshi Nakamoto. So on this show, since I'm away in California, I'm thinking I'll pile all the songs that I've done on previous Mad Money Machine episodes into this one episode and get them all out of the way. So you don't have to hear them again. You don't have to be interrupted by this nonsense. So here's one about the poor stock picker. It's stock picking blues. Well, I've been trying to find another way to make me some money. Cause my job ain't got much pay Yeah, I've been trying to find another way to make me some money Cause my job ain't got much pay So I've been fooling around in that stock market Trying to do it Jimmy Kramer's way shares of Mr. Softy It's gone down day by day Then uh, I bought a hundred of United Health Grow I lost about half of it that way So He said, he said, I want you to sell that, Mr. Softy. That's just a house of pain. And I want you to sell you in H. That's been money down. my house, auctioned my car, pawned all my jewelry, even sold my brand new pair of shoes, and I put everything I owned in the stocks that Jimmy told me to do. Stock pick and blues. Stocks wasn't what I was needing. Had to set it and forget it. To try and stop the bleeding. Ain't no use trying to beat the market. There's just too many people competing. So, fellas, I got some news. I'm all done now with the stock picking blues. Oh, 
Mr. Softy, of course, is Microsoft, UNH, United Healthcare Group, uh, Crystal X, a gold mining company. Jim Cramer had one in time recommended buying all those, then recommended selling all of those. And, you know, I tracked his stock picks in the year 2006, and I uh, put them up against a portfolio of index funds. The portfolio of index funds went up something like 26%, and the portfolio of Jim Cramer stock picks went down 0.2%. <laughs> so I was pretty convinced after a year of all that hard work that picking stocks wasn't the right thing to do. And I'm sure that applies to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as well, as well as any market for gold and silver and pork bellies. Buy and hold now, boy. So one of the things supporters of Bitcoin like to crow about is the fact that it's not inflationary and you know in precise definitions of it it is kind of inflationary because they're putting out mm, 25 new bitcoins every 10 minutes at the moment you know in another three years that'll decrease to 12 and a half bitcoins every 10 minutes but that's millions of dollars of bitcoins a day so at the moment bitcoin is kind of inflationary but there will come a point when no more Bitcoins are created, which makes it eh, kind of deflationary as more people want to hold Bitcoins. Well, there was an episode on Green Acres dealing with inflation. And I'll play a little segment of that for you. Followed by my interpretation of the Green Acres opening theme song. Pound of bacon, two pounds of butter, two loaves of bread, a large can of peas, a quart of olive oil, a can of sardines, and a pound of chopped meat. That'd be all, Mr. Douglas? Yes, that's all. That comes to a dollar eighteen. A dollar eighteen? Don't get mad at me. It ain't my doing. A wholesaler raises me, and I gotta raise you. I, uh, yeah, well... It's criminal the way prices are going up. You bought any gas lately? It's 13 cents a gallon now. Thirteen? Hey, you need anything else, Mr. Douglas? No, no, thanks, that's all. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. There's a letter for you. Oh? Yeah, the way things are going up, I'm surprised folks are writing anymore. Uh. Writing paper's going up five cents a box. It's hard to get a bottle of ink for less than four cents. Oh, yeah. I hate to tell you what I have to charge for blotters. And you bought any pen wipers lately? Uh, no. I... Well, don't. Uh, look, could I please have my letter? Oh, yeah, there you are. The whole thing's getting out of hand. And remember, the definition of inflation is an increase in the supply of money. A result of inflation is higher prices. Let's get that straight. And speaking of Green Acres, speaking of Green Acres, I wonder if you've ever heard this take on uh, the Green Acres theme. Sing along if you know the words. Just give me that countryside! That goes all the way back to episode 109 of the original Mad Mud Machine and May 1st, 2008. Oh, how time flies. That was six years ago that we, we were on this Green Acres watching kick. Uh, we rented all the DVDs from Netflix and watched, I think, well, we got through most of the seasons of Green Acres. Good, wholesome fun. I promise next week to get back into the hardcore news about Bitcoin, but we can have a little fun, can't we? Take a little time off every once in a while to talk about other things besides Bitcoin and the dark future. So that would be Friday, 
June the 20th, 3 p.m. Set your podcast capture device now. Call the Mad Money Machine voicemail line at 571-366-7121. So three episodes ago, I played a little snippet out of uh, the Nova Science Show that talked about how scientists have discovered that the universe is all just bits. And then uh, two weeks ago, talked about how scientists and computer scientists have developed a computer simulation uh the you know a very detailed simulation of the big bang of the universe and then last week i uh, read to you from nick bostrom's simulation argument that uh, postulated that either one of three things could be true either that one almost all of the civilizations at our level of development become extinct before becoming technologically mature or two the fraction of those technologically mature civilizations that are interested in creating ancestor simulations is almost zero. Or three, we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. And if you think about the processing power of computers doubling every 18 months or so and extrapolating that power out to 10 million years, then 10 million years from now, there is the power to develop a universe simulation. The question is, does anyone want to create one? If the answer is yes, then we're probably living in one. He says, if we are in a simulation, could we ever know it for certain? If whoever simulated us doesn't want us to find out, we probably never will know. But if they do choose to reveal themselves, they could certainly do so. Now, if they created a simulation of our universe, couldn't they start it at some arbitrary point? I mean, they don't have to evolve their simulation from absolute zero. They could start it somewhere. And in the simulation, there would be physical objects that predate the beginning of the start of the simulation. And what would be the purpose of the simulation? Why would someone want to simulate a universe? I don't know why do we play the Sims games ourselves. Tamagotchi and the Sims and Sim City. It's fun. What's the objective of the simulation? We want to create little people like ourselves that get along with each other real well and build a happy place. Now, could the simulator intervene in the simulation? Yeah, I'm sure they would try not to if they didn't have to because they want the people to think that everything around them is real and natural but sometimes things just go wrong and you kind of have to go in and reset the system a little bit maybe the simulator leaves little clues around that the people living in the simulation can uh, pick up and realize that they are simulated (laughs) and there was a person that simulated them and all the simulator wants is for the little people to acknowledge that fact. Of course, another more compelling idea is, what if in the time of the technologically mature civilizations that develop these simulations, what if they allow people to enter into the simulation? Of course, when they're in the simulation, they don't know that they're really an advanced person outside the simulation as well, but they've been placed inside as part of the great game. Just a little lighthearted thought to think about while you're weekend uh, gardening or mowing the lawn or tidying up your closets. <laughs> Let's pull something out of the tool crib. Well, I know you like Zero Block which is from the good folks at blockchain.info. It's an iPhone app or perhaps an Android app as well. Uh, I'd like, if you like that one, you might also want to go check out Block Street uh, for iPhone. And I don't even know if it's for Android. Who cares if it's for Android? Nobody uses Android, do they? It's all iPhones, right? <laughs> no, Block Street is another free app for the iPhone. And by the way, is this true now? Are we, have we finally decided that it's true that Apple's going to allow Bitcoin apps in the App Store or not? See, I'm in California. I don't know the answer to that yet. 
Uh, but anyway, Block Street gives you the price of Bitcoin and a lot of nice little charts, an hour, 12 hours, one day, seven days a month. It gives you the total market cap of not only Bitcoin, but Litecoin, NXT coin, Dark coin, uh, Pure coin, Doge, and a bunch of others that I don't recognize what these symbols mean. FTC, QRK, XPM, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's a news tab so you can catch up on all the latest news. And of course, a handy dandy Bitcoin conversion calculator. You know what the best thing about Block Street is? Just like the best things in life. It's free. Check it out in the iPhone App Store. Block Street. Well, you've heard me talk often about how we need a auction site that takes Bitcoin to uh, replace eBay and PayPal and its overcharging of its fees. Well, this news to you is, of course, about a week old since I've been on vacation for a week. But just before I left on vacation, I found this little clip on CNBC where they talked to John Donahoe, the CEO of eBay, about Bitcoin. John Donahoe, CEO of eBay. You uh, wrote a column about what, this. I know, hinting quite heavily that eBay may very soon start accepting Bitcoin. Wow. Listen to what he had to say. I think there's no doubt digital currency is going to play an important role going forward. And at PayPal, we're going to have to integrate digital currencies into our wallet. So, so handicap it. How quickly do you think we're going to see Bitcoin in PayPal? Oh, I don't know. I can't give a specific time, but I think you'll begin to see Bitcoin used in different use cases, whether it's a peer-to-peer -peer use case, a cross-border transaction, some, someone sending currency to someone else. And then over time, you'll begin to see it with some merchants accepting Bitcoin. And I don't know how big it'll get, how quickly, but I do think the underlying theme of digital currency is something that we're, we're aware of and we're going to pay attention to. You own any Bitcoin? Yes, I do. Personally? Yes, I do. <laughs> what do you think it should be worth? I don't, I don't, you know, for me, I'm not buying it as an investment. I'm buying it to understand how it can be used. I think there are two sides of it, the investment side and then the digital currency side. I'm more interested in the digital currency side about how, how you and I can exchange value seamlessly using technology. I got to tell you, I don't know if it's a Stockholm syndrome or what, but everybody that I talk to out here, and it's sort of, you, you get into it, uh, really does talk about Bitcoin as, as the next big thing, and they believe it, uh, and they, they mean it. It is not um, just some kind of fly-by-night thing that uh, they're playing with. They are serious, and very big companies out here, uh, very, very serious about it. The now, I think that would be really, really cool if eBay would institute, you know, direct purchase from the uh, seller via Bitcoin. Integrate Bitcoin right into the payment system on, on the website. Wouldn't that be amazing? Of course, I don't know how they would deal with <laughs> refunds and all that. PayPal does provide some, eh, I guess, provide some uh, features for its fees. You know, it provides this protection against fraudulent uh, sellers. But, I, you know, I've bought probably over 500 things on eBay since 1998. And I've... Uh, I think I've only had one problem. I got something that was wrong. I can't remember what it was. I used to be able to say I've never had a problem, but there was a time within the past couple of years I got something that was really just kind of fake. But still like to see Bitcoin integrated into eBay. Let's make it happen. Well, I um, will be back in the saddle next week with full coverage of Bitcoin news of the week a new tool, a new guru, and hopefully lots of new supporters. Go out to madmanmachine.com. This is Paul Boyer saying it takes money to make money, and it takes millibits to make a mad money machine. I want to thank you for joining me this week. I'll also tell you next time all about my trip around California. And I think I'm going to get to see the Googleplex. It's going to be fun. 
or I think I've already seen the Googleplex, I guess, by the time you're hearing this. In the meantime, buy some Bitcoins, spend some Bitcoins using Broker.com, donate some Bitcoins to you-know-who, then replenish your Bitcoins. You can follow me at Twitter, at Mad Money Machine. I'm also on Facebook. You can call the voicemail line, 571-366-7121. And for those of you that hate music, well, this is, this show's been really uh, awful for you because you've had to endure three songs already. But one of the songs was uh, the Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze music. There's a legend, an urban myth, that they asked Jimi Hendrix, what's it feel like to be the best guitar player in the world? And he is reported to have said, I don't know. You'll have to ask Phil Keggy. Well, I've seen Phil Keggy perform live four times in my life. Once was back in 1980 when he had a band. The other three times were more recent when it's just him on stage. And he is a one-man band. You might want to go out to YouTube and watch some of his videos, uh, especially his one-man stage performances where he's got all these uh, pedals that he uses to overlay and overdub and jam master mix his uh, guitar. He, you know, he plays the drums and trumpet and organ and everything on, on his uh, elect, uh, acoustic guitar. I wanted to give you a little sample of what the guitar stylings of Phil Keggy are like. This is from his Grammy Award winning Master and Musician album going back 30 years, 30 plus years. It's called Follow Me Up. I'll see you next week.
Yeah, if you get a chance, I'd recommend get, go see a Phil Keggy concert. You, PhilKeggy.com. You can click on the tour button there, get your tour dates. Um, this is like June 21st, Mineral City, Ohio. June 22nd, Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Then July 19th, Asheville, North Carolina. Norton Shores, Michigan on August 8th. Midland, Texas, Texas August 29th. And all the way into October 13th, Longview, Texas. PhilKeggy.com. Thanks so much for listening to the Mad Money Machine. I'll see you next week.